today I want to talk to you about arithmetic arithmetic series. Now I know this says arithmetic sequence, but notice it says the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence. And if you remember from our first video, um, that was kind of an intro, um, we talked about how there are sequences and there are series. So when you're adding up all the terms of a sequence, we call that a series. So if an arithmetic sequence has first term a sub one and common difference d, then the sum s sub n of the first n terms is given by these formulas. Now you've got two formulas and which one you use is going to depend on what information you're given. So if you know the first term and the last term of your sequence, then you can use this first formula. But if you don't, you could use this one here. So if you are keeping, I would recommend that you, um, you know, we have some formulas for arithmetic sequences. Um, I would write those down on either a large index card or a piece of paper and then add these to it. Um, we're also going to be learning about geometric sequences and geometric series. So it's kind of nice to have all the formulas in one place. It doesn't take a lot of room to do that, but that way you're not flipping through all your notes to try and find the appropriate formulas. So, so let's talk about some examples. I'm sorry about all these extra little green things that, um, from the document that you know, was thinking that it was the wrong grammar or something and somehow got copied into that. So for this first one, we want to find, um, this is the sequence, 48, 44, 40, 36, and then this is a dot, dot, dot. And we wanna evaluate S sub 21. So what do we know? Um, first of all, remember we've got those two formulas on that previous page, so you wanna keep those in mind. So I know that A sub one is 48. And I know D because notice it's going down. It's it's decreasing. I subtract 4. I subtract 4. Um, so we get D is negative 4. Um, we also know that N is 21 because I'm told this is S sub 21. So that tells me N is 21. But I don't know the last term. I don't know A sub N. So since I don't know a sub n, I'm going to write down this formula. So I'm going to use s sub n equals n over 2, 2 times a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, so I'm identifying which formula I want to use. So then to find s sub 21, I'm going to take 21 halves. 2 times 48, because that's a sub 1, plus, this is n minus 1, so 21 minus 1 is 20 times negative 4. And so notice I have all everything I need there. So then I get 21 halves. If you do the math here, you will get 16. And we get then... 168. Okay, so that would be our answer. So I'm going to do this pro same problem. I want to just kind of approach it from a little different format. Um, let's suppose um, without this formula. So from our arithmetic sequence, we know that a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So that's our formula for a sequence. So then if I want to figure this out, so I have a sub n, a sub 1 we said was 48. I'm going to leave this an n, n minus 1 times negative 4. So then I'm going to distribute the negative 4, so we get 48 minus 4n plus 4. So then if I simplify that, I get a sub n equals negative 4n plus 52. So this is my general rule for this particular, particular sequence, okay? So then if you think back to with the summation notation, if I go from n equal 1 to 21 
and I just plug in this negative 4n plus 52, you might want to stop and try that on your calculator using the summation notation, you will get 168. So this method would work as well without using this formula. Okay, so part B, use a formula for S sub n to evaluate the sum of the first 200 positive integers. So let's think about what that looks like. Um, positive integers, so we've got one plus, the next one would be two, plus three, plus four, plus dot, 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 plus 198, plus 199, plus 200. So we can look at this and we can use the formula easy enough. We know a sub one is one. We know a sub n is 200 and we know n is 200. So we can go right to that formula where we have s sub n equals n over two of a sub one plus a sub n. So we have 100 times one plus 200. So we get 20,100. So that's using the formula. But if you think about this, um, here's my list. Notice that if I take the one plus 200, I get 201. If I take the 2 plus 199, I get 201. If I take 3 plus 198, I get 201. I could continue to do that. I'm going to have 100 pairs of 201. So sometimes you can figure out um, some answers without even using the formulas if you just kind of think about it. All right, this next one says the sum of the first 15 terms of an arithmetic sequence, you wanna pay attention to this because this tells you what kind of sequence it is so you know what kind of formula to use. Um, so is 345. So with symbols, that would be S sub 15 is 345. So that means N is 15 because I can kind of look at this subscript right here to, to figure out what my N value is. Now, they tell me a sub 15, so that's like my last term, that's my a sub n term is 65, but I don't know a sub one. So if I use this formula, s sub n equals n over two times a sub one plus a sub n. So n is 15, so I'm gonna have 345 equals 15 halves, don't know a sub one, but a sub n is my a sub 15, so that's 65. So I have to figure out a way to find out what a sub one is. So a lot of times when I get to a point like this, I think, oh, I'm stuck. So I go back to another formula that I know dealing with arithmetic sequences. So that is a sub n equals a sub one plus n minus one times d. That's why if you have your formulas all in one place, it helps because then you can just kind of look at them and think, what could I use? So from here, I'm going to say um, a sub n we know is 65. I um, a sub 1. Oh, actually, could we go back? Oh, wait, I, I don't need to do that. So we're gonna come back to that to find D. So hold that thought. But actually right here, you're probably wondering, uh, there's only one unknown, you can find that. Yes, we can. So if you work this out, um, and you can, I can multiply both sides by 2 15ths and then subtract 65, pretty easily enough, you should be able to say that A sub one is negative 19. Sorry about that. But now I have to find D. So I know A sub one is negative 19. I've got to find D. So that's what I'm going to do over here. So I have my negative 19 
n is 15, so this is going to be 14 times d. So now we can add 19 and divide by 14. If you do that and work that out, you get d equals 6. So we were asked to find these two values. So on this next one, we're just asked to evaluate the sum. I am okay. Now, let me just talk about this just to make sure you understand what's happening. Remember, we're, um, by the way, these are both arithmetic. Um, you should recognize arithmetic sequences, the, the rules for them look like linear equations. So that's how you can kind of recognize those. Um, so these are arithmetic. So that means if we, um, they, we have different ways we can do this. One of them is by plugging it in. So we would have 5 times 5 minus 10 plus 5 times 6 minus 10. And you would keep doing that until you got to the last one, which would be 5 times 12 minus 10. But, you know, that seems a, like a lot. Um, I showed you how to do that on your calculator with the summation notation, which that's kind of nice. So that would be an option as well. The other thing you can do is if you know the first term and the last term. So if you plug in the 5, 5 times 5 is 25 minus 10. So um, let me hold, hold on. Just, so I, I just kind of want to, I, I was just playing with this because I was just thinking about this. Um, but using this formula, if we have S sub N equals N over two, and then we're gonna add the first plus the last term. So if you plug a five in, you'll get the first term. So five times five is 25 minus 10 is 15. So that would go here. If you plug the 12 in, you get the last term. Five times 12 is 60, 60 minus 10 is 50. So that goes here. My N is, um, cause we're, we're counting up from five um, to 12. So there's actually um, eight different things there. I know you might think, well, wait, 12 minus five is, is seven. Um, if you work that out, start at five, you're counting up to the 12. It's because you want to use the five and the 12, both endpoints. So N is actually eight. And if you work this out, um, you will actually get 260, which is the same thing you get if you did this. And it's the same thing you get if you use the summation notation on your calculator. Um, then for this one, you could, and I don't care which method you use. So if you just use the summation method on your calculator um, and you can try it and verify that you get negative 42. Then the last one I wanna do, this is from your textbook on page 901, number 59. The directions just say, a partial sum of an arithmetic sequence is given find the sum. So we don't know how, I mean, we could figure it out if how many were missing in between here. Um, but we, we're going to call this, um, this is my a sub one. This is my a sub n. I don't know how many there are, but I know the difference between these. If you do 250, um, you're going to have to subtract 17 so we're subtracting 17 each time. So that means my value of D is negative 17. So I've got some information then that I can use. So I'm gonna find a formula. Now I know A sub one and I know A sub N. So I'm gonna write down that formula. S sub N is N over two times A sub one plus A sub N. Now, the problem is, is we don't know n. So I'm gonna find it. Because I know a sub one is 250, a sub n is 97. So this is when I'm gonna grab another formula and I'm gonna use this one, a sub n equals a sub one plus n minus one times d. So I know a sub n is 97, so I can fill that in. I know a sub 1 is 250. Okay, remember that these are 
um, the terms of an arithmetic sequence that we're adding together, which gives us the series. So that's why I can say this is a sub one. And I don't know n, but I know d is negative 17. So if you, um, we can do the math here. So here's the math I did. I just did 97 minus 250, took that divided by negative 17, took that and added one, and then you get your value for n. So n, n equals 10. Now I'm gonna come back over here and say s sub n, or s sub 10 at this point, I guess I could call that, is 10 halves 250 plus 97, and I'd like that calculator back again. So 250 plus 97, and multiply that by five, I get 1735. And that is my partial sum. So that should take care of what you would need to do to complete the assignment that goes along with this lesson.